at the, at the end of the first part of the program, you mentioned something very important about how the emerging marketing world is reacting to all this. I live in Russia, and it's one of the interesting things that's been added on since 2009-10, is that as Russia's reform project continues, it's always worried about external risks, and it's really taking its toll. Yeah, obviously, you know, Russia does export a lot to to the eurozone, so that that uh, there is certainly a risk, and they are they are doing well at looking more at diversifying towards Asia and trading more with right. Asia. Uh, but generally speaking, you know, we always see things from an investor's perspective as we are investment advisors, and we actually think that the Russian equity market and, and Russian companies are very good valued, even accounting for those risks of exports to the eurozone. And some things really they will still need, even if the economy isn't isn't going necessarily that well, like natural gas for heating, cooking, and so on. So we think there's actually quite, quite some good value to be had in Russia. And as mentioned, you know, Russia doesn't have that debt problem no. that the Western countries have, yet the market is already discounted more, and, and the, a lot of the Asian economies also. When compared with that, I was just going to say one last thing on that. Uh, you know, while, while people always say, oh, China's the evil economist and so, and so on, no freedom and then similar to Russia. Well, in some ways, uh, China, they, they, they are more supportive of businesses uh, in many ways than in the United States, where maybe capitalism has made way to some extent to corporatism. There's a lot of special interests gaining, gaining advantages, a lot of more regulations that make business a lot tougher. So we, we are generally more positive on what's happening in, in Asia and the emerging markets. I think, uh, in London, what do you think about that? Because can we well, expect the emerging disagree, market world to carry the water all the time now? Well, I do, uh, well, unfortunately, disagree with that opinion because, um, well, I do totally agree about the fact about the authoritarianism that is emerging and this corporatism that is emerging in advanced nations, and that is hindering a lot of opportunities. I totally agree with that. However, uh, to deny the formulation of capitalism or diversion of capitalism is the wrong thing to do. And to say that, you know, for example, communism, socialist methodology is better, I think is going a bit too far, in fact, far too far, uh, considering the fact that what we just aren't doing is to admit the divergence of different types of governance style and capitalism that's involved. And as long as you can embrace that and make a flexibility of introducing different types of governance style based on different forms of capitalism, then it's possible. For example, Japan had been growing on back of that. So, um, I do believe that still, even though there's a lot of faults, if we can at least admit and adhere to different types of you know, capitalism, then I think we still have a way forward, certainly much more flexible than having a very heavy country risk, for example, as we're seeing with the dispute between China and Japan. Mm -hmm. You know, Chris, you know, I guess everybody likes to use the ism words, and, you know, and I've used it on the, uh, on the program, capitalism, but is capitalism working for the average person in the Eurozone? Well, I don't think that it's um, a, a question of working in this part of the world or that part of the world exactly. Um, I think that one of the trends that we need to pay attention to looking at it from a popular perspective is the question of jobs. So, for instance, you get some of the discussion in the U.S. presidential debate um, concerning uh, who's going to preserve the jobs, who's going to create the jobs in the United States, and accusations fly, for instance, against Mitt Romney, um, as a job exporter, that the jobs are being exported to other countries. What that neglects is that the number of jobs also diminish um, internationally. In other words, it's not a simple one-to-one -one transfer of jobs from the advanced uh, capitalist world to the emerging economies. Um, but rather, there is the question of an old you know, sort of Marxist question of wages and capital, meaning mm -hmm. what's the relationship between um, wages and capital investment. And the issue now is how to get capital flowing again such that jobs can be created. I think that that's where the real impasse is. And while certainly different nations, different countries will adopt different policies, there's still the overall trend in the global economy of the elimination of jobs, and that creates a problem for the broad masses of people. Well, you know, it, Martin, if I can go back to you, I mean, you know, it's, it's going back to China bashing that everyone likes to do in the United States, which I think is really nonsensical. <laughs> no, I mean, corporations go to China, you know? You know, they, they, they go there to make money, okay? It's not because it's, you know, nice people or because of its ideology or anything else. It's because of labor. Yeah, and I don't really think that it's, you know, uh, robots to blame or that it's China to blame for that. I mean, you know, it would, it would be great if robots took all the works and we don't, wouldn't have to work as long as they don't, you know, uh, uh, expand the debt, then, you know, we don't really have that much of a problem. Similarly, it's not really...